out my Mortensen math blocks one day, and I really started paying attention to how pretty and attractive this nine was. It's this wonderful mint green, and it's so nice and tall. I started talking to it. <laughs> Boy, you are such a pretty, pretty color, and you're so nice and tall. It must be wonderful being a nine. You know what? The nine talked back. <laughs> yeah, it is nice being a nine. I like being tall. I'm taller than most of the other blocks. But you know what? I really, really would like to be a 10. Why would you like to be a 10? Well, I'm a unit bar. And you know, 10s are the next largest kind. I really would like to be a 10. Can you help the 9 out? Let's get our tray, and let's put a 10 there. 9 wants to be a? You're right. 9 wants to be a 10. What does 9 need to be a 10? 9 needs a 1. Ah, that's it. 9 with a 1 makes 10. And why does 9 want to be a 10? Because it's the next largest kind. Well, I ran into an 8. I started talking to the 8. Now look, what do you see and what do you think of when you look at that 8? It's that nice chocolatey brown color. Boy, I bet you're just so happy being an eight. People must really like you. And the eight said, yeah, people do like me because I'm that chocolate color, color. And you know how many chocoholics there are in the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty popular. But I really would like to be a 10. You know, nine said the same thing. Why do you want to be a 10? Because I'm a unit bar. And I want to be the next largest kind. I want to be a 10. Can we help the 8 out? Here's an 8. And 8 wants to be a 10. What does 8 need to be a 10? Can you tell? It needs 2. And guess what? Do you know what 7 wants to be? Right. 7 wants to be a 10. What does 7 need to be a 10? 7 needs a 3. Yeah. Now, why did 7 want to be a 10? Because it's the next largest kind. Can you guess what 6 wants to be? You're right. I can't fool you, can I? And what does 6 need to be a 10? 6 needs a 4. Young children love this. Can you hear them giggling over this? And when you hold up the 5 and say, what does 5 want to be? There's not going to be any hesitation, right? Five wants to be a 10. And what does five need to be a 10? They're seeing the pattern now. Five needs a five. The tray, self-correcting. And it's so easy for them to see this. Please note that I started with a nine. Now, why would I start with a nine? Because when we had that one missing, it's very obvious, right? The child cannot fail because that's the piece that goes there. And it's real easy for them to see that just the one is missing. And now we can continue on with this. Think about fun games that you can play with this want to be a 10. You can make up a shopping game. If you're working with a small group of students, hand them some pieces. So imagine that I, one child has this bar, another one has, oops, I want to use the positive ones, this one, another one has this, and another child has this. And they're holding it in their hands like this. You can't see it, but the child can look and see. Now you hold up a nine bar, right? What does the nine want to be? A 10. What does the 9 need to be a 10? A 1. So what is 9 going to shop for? A 1. Now a child's holding this in their hand. Do you have a 1? No. Another child. Do you have a 1? Yes. Oh. 9's found a 1, and 9 with 1 make what? 10. And 9 is so happy because 9 with a 1 makes 10. 
Suppose that eight were out shopping. What does eight want to be? A 10. What does eight need to be a 10? A two. What's eight going to shop for? A two. What is eight looking for? A two. Do you have a two? No. Do you have a two? No. Do you have a two? No. Boy, I hope I can find a two soon, because my feet are getting really, really tired from all the shopping. Let's check the next door. Do you have a two? Yes. Now, eight has a two. Well, an eight with a two makes what? 10. And eight is so happy with the two, because that makes 10. Now, that's what you can do with a group of students. What if you're just working with one or two? Could you hide these under checkbook boxes or cups? Right. And the child can play a concentration game. Another type of game could be, let's put up the other bars. And we have to have a five twice, right? And we can cover up these bars. So we uncover the five, right? I uncover it. I've got this one. Now, I take a turn. Maybe I uncover this three. That's not what I want. So the next child can take a turn, or you as the adult. Let's see. Let's just pick one. What if I uncovered the seven? What does seven want? A three. I remember where that three was. It was right here. And so you keep it. So with two children, with one, you can adapt this play concentration game. And another fun thing to do is have the child with all the pieces in front hold up a nine. What is the child going to hold up? Nine wants to be a 10. So from the child's stack, they go and grab a one. If I hold up a six, what, what are you going to hold up? A four. Again, let your imagination be your guide. Of course, with older children, you're going to have to make this a much more sophisticated approach. <laughs>